previously in New World, I continued my adventure at level 20 by getting caught up to the main story and eventually running my first dungeon at level 23. Shortly after, I decided that I wasn't enjoying the melee combat too much, so I decided to re-roll my weapons and armor to Fire Staff, Ice Gauntlet, Full Int, Light Armor build. I cleared the dungeon, leveled up my faction rank to Gladiator, Broccoli. I got to see some cool open world PvP outside of Windswood, Broccoli. I ventured to Brightwood to kill some spooky ghosts, Broccoli. And at level 28, I became obsessed with gathering and cooking, ending the episode at level 30 with level 112 cooking and 100 harvesting. But first, a quick word from today's Broccoli. Dragon Raja is a very unique MMORPG available on both Android and iOS that has a few futuristic high fantasy theme. I've covered Dragon Raja on this channel in the past, and I was impressed by the sheer variety of features this game has, as well as the high level of attention to detail that you don't typically see in mobile games. Visually, Dragon Raja is one of the best looking mobile MMOs out there with graphics powered by Unreal Engine 4. The game features a highly explorable open world with fun interactions such as standing in the street to block traffic, slipping on the ground, or having a cup of coffee in a cafe. Additionally, the game has something for absolutely everyone, from PvE dungeons and boss fights, to PvP arenas and battlegrounds. Or, if combat isn't your thing, the game has an in-depth career system where you can choose to become a chef, photographer, superstar, open a shop, or as of a recent update, become a skateboarder. Personally, the feature I find the most impressive about Dragon Raja is its super in-depth player housing system that gives you more customization options than most PC MMO housing. And this year, Dragon Raja has taken this feature to the next level, introducing the marriage feature and allowing players to share and build a couple's home together. Right now, Dragon Raja has just launched a collaboration event with the famous anime IP Evangelion, which will last one month from the 21st of October to the 20th of November. During this time, there will be limited events, storylines, vehicles, outfits and decorations, as well as a bunch of free gifts sent to anyone who logs in to take part. Dragon Raja is also now available to play on PC as well as mobile with the same game account, so click the link in the description below to play Dragon Raja today. Download now. Back again today with episode 3 of my New World Journey to Level Cap video. Starting out in Brightwood, currently pretty close to level 31. In this episode, let's make a big push to level 40. Right now the MSQ wants me to head down to Weaver's Fen, but this zone is level 30 to 40 and I've just hit level 30. Probably a little bit too hard for me right now, so we're going to do some quests in Brightwood and level up a little bit first. Get vengeance against savage bears. Oh god. The last time I tried to mess with some bears, it didn't go too well for me. Lay this camp before we inevitably go die to the bear. Oh, there he is. Wait, maybe we can help this player. Don't worry, run to me. We can fight it together, my friend. Die, bear. Just kite it. I'll do the damage. Got him. Good job. Wait. Oh, we need to do it four times. Okay. One bear's not enough, apparently. I can actually kite this bear fairly well because I'm light now. Absolutely baited the bear. Outplayed on every level wrecked. There's obviously not too many players on my server that have 100 wood cutting because all of these blue trees that require 100 lumbering, I've never seen anyone chop them down. Perhaps I could be that player. Okay, I've deforested the whole area. There's no more trees left for me to chop. That is pretty cool really, isn't it? That you can just deforest a whole area. Our bear friend has finally spawned. If I can avoid getting hit, that would be nice. These bears do big damage. There we go. Easy. Hand in the bear quest, and that's level 31. He's got another quest for me as well. This time he wants me to go back and kill the bear that I already killed. The big boss bear. Okay, these guys seemingly need to do this quest. Come on. This way. Oh, of course I get aggro for it. Just kite it. Oh, just kite it, I say. Oh, it's smashing my ice tomb pretty quick. Oh my god. Just kite it, Keck W. Oh, it's retreating. I'm dead. I'm bad. Save me! I'll pull it out of the cave. I'll pull it out. Run! Run! <laughs> okay, we'll fight it in the open then. See yourselves. Is he retreating? You guys, fight it in the cave, you absolute vaginas. I'm gonna come back and do this quest another time. Maybe at peak time or something. It's just not enough players. Ooh, this is this new thing I can gather, right? Silkweed. Let's see how much gathering XP silkweed gives me. 
you need 100 harvesting to gather this. 353 a pop, that's really good. This stuff should sell for decent money. Oh nice, loads of silkweed. Not too many players can harvest this right now, so got it all to myself. I knew my crazy gathering grind would pay off at some point. Nice lighting as we're transitioning here into Weaver's Fen. So, have they changed Weaver's Fen at all? The last time I played this game, this zone was like a copy and paste of Brightwood, but more swampy. What the fuck is that that's just spawned in the distance? Some kind of weird animal? I've never seen a monster like this in the game. Hortus Bear. It's like a special bear of this zone, is it? I've never seen a monster that looks like this before. Whee! Respect the bear. He's a big boy. Oh, and he's got special abilities. That is cool. Oh, and instead of skinning the bear, you can mine it. It requires 100 mining, though. Very cool. I feel bad about my mining skill. It's only level 52. Next to fishing, it's one of my weakest gathering skills. I love getting pure kill quests in areas where there's lots of mobs. I, I wish there was more of that. I just want to grind sometimes. Most of the quests are like, kill four of something, kill three of something. And the amount of time that it takes to do the quest mostly comes down to the running, the distance between the quests, not the actual fighting or the doing of the quest. That's a bloody cool looking area for mobs, isn't it? Proper swamp spooky area. Now the MSQ wants me to go back to Brightwood, which is what I wanted to do anyway. Recall to in. This little trip was meant to be a five minute detour just to hand in the MSQ. Been in Weaver's Fen for about an hour, did quite a lot of quests and got some good XP from it. Cooking 113. First time I've seen fiber in Brightwood. Oh. That's level 32. Now I'm level 32. Let's open these boxes. Please give me an upgrade. Useless, 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 useless. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine. So now I have 154 int, and that's going to give me plus 15% elemental damage. Significantly stronger now. Deliver lumber, light rations, we can do that one. And that's level 33. Lag detected. No, dude, you disconnected me and now you put me back in queue, you fuck. Oh, 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 I hate you so much. That's an hour queue right there. One eternity later. Still upping those gathering skills. Ice Gauntlet level 12. See if this guy's got another quest for me. I'm guessing he has. <laughs> Only 1,400 XP for running all that way and doing a quest that took a bit of time. It's almost not worth it. Like, the amount of XP you get from these random quests out in the world, the time it takes to run from A to B to do the quest and then hand it back in, it really doesn't feel worth it. It feels like you would probably get a similar amount of XP from just gathering and grinding mobs. It's really difficult to prioritize what quests you should and shouldn't do in this game because they really don't feel that rewarding. It's just a constant slog. Do you really want to spend 10 minutes running for a measly... 1,400 XP at level 33. Hard to justify sometimes. The only time questing feels okay, kind of decent, is when you're doing multiple quests in the same area. Oh, dude, he wants me to run all the way over here. Fuck me. Why couldn't the quest be here? Why do you have to run across fucking continents for one shitty little quest that gives 80 gold and 1,000 XP? It doesn't have to be that way. It's so much fucking running. They must have got an intern to design the quests for this game because it doesn't make sense. You go to an area, usually in an MMO, and it makes sense that the quest you're doing is to teach you about the area. But the quests in New World, no, that's not how it works. You go to an area and the fucking quest will send you across the map. And it's like the location of the NPCs don't make sense relative to where you're questing. It's really baffling. Like, I would assume take the quest from here and we're going to be learning about this little part of the map here questing around learning about the lore of this area now nah, let's fuck off all the way over here so the objective of this quest was to run from here to here to kill six mobs loot one chest why could i have not done the same thing kill six mobs and loot one chest in this area when the quest was given to me here why make me run all the way over here i don't get it it doesn't make sense if there was one song that I'd use to describe New Worlds, it would have to be that song that goes, 
run. That exactly what new world is. <laughs> run. What the hell is going on with those mobs over there? The server absolutely needs some maintenance. What is going on? You can't really get mad at Amazon for having bad servers. Like, it's just a small indie company, really, isn't it? It's not their fault. Maybe we could start a GoFundMe to help them out. And that's level 125 tracking and skinning. I can now track small predators, which is actually going to be pretty useful for some of the quests I've got right now. Turn in this quest, and that's level 34. Got a lot of weapon boxes to open. Maybe we'll get an upgrade. Come on, give me something good. Useless, 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 useless. Also useless, 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 useless. Why are we still here? Alligators are so easy to kill, you just sidestep them. They seem to be horizontally challenged. Pretty cool part of the map. Massive temple that we can climb up, followed by a giant bridge. Lots of chests, so I'm just exploring this place and kind of grinding mobs for now. <gasps> no, don't! Oops. Well, this is the perfect place for kiting mobs. Oh, there's archer mobs. We don't want archer mobs. We don't like archer mobs. AoE the archer mobs. Okay, we did it. Big damage, big grinding. Killed everything. We are so high right now. Oh, we've made it to the bridge. We've, we're only as high as the bridge. Wait, it goes even higher. We are exploring. It's still going. Dude, this place is high. It's got to be the highest point in New World. Bunch of chests to reward us for our pilgrimage. That view is fucking epic. Holy moly. That is cool. Right, where's the boss? No, no boss? Okay, so this is the top for real. And yeah, I don't see any boss. But what I do see is a damn cool view. Look at that. The sense of scale in this game is fantastic. I climbed so long to get up here. And looking in the distance, there's still other structures that are taller than this. Like that place over there. Just seeing things in the distance in this game and knowing I could go there if I want to. It's really cool. Completely blinded by the light. I kind of wish I was here at a different time of day. So I'm not just getting blinded. How does this game not have swimming? I need to swim over to that island. It's a pirate game. We got here by getting on a boat to come to an island. You wouldn't be allowed on a boat if you couldn't swim. One of the stupidest things about this bloody game. People were complaining about the game not having swimming two years ago in testing. So after many hours of running around each of the zones, kind of mindlessly doing every quest I've seen, I've noticed that some of these quests didn't really seem worth it. As you've probably noticed from this video, I've been complaining about it constantly. I eventually decided that I would look for a more optimal way to level. I asked my friend and apparently the best way to level up in this game currently is through doing town project quests at three different towns and running between them. This is a much more relaxing way of leveling as it means I can turn my brain off and focus on the best aspect of this game in my opinion, which is the crafting, gathering and just chilling out in the zone without really thinking too much about searching for bloody chests. So what I've been doing is distributing some of my raw resources between Windswood, Everfall and potentially Brightwood and then I'm just gonna go back and forth doing these town projects constantly. Here's an example of how good the XP for that is. Just simply doing an armor smithing quest, hardly any resources involved, 3k XP. One hour ago I did three faction missions, it took me about an hour and that gave me about the same amount of XP. So this is definitely a lot better. I know I said in episode one I wasn't going to go into this game playing optimally, but I actually regret that because the questing in this game is so bad that you just kind of want to get through it as quickly as possible, and playing optimally is probably optimal fun in this game when the questing is so bad. Okay, hunt wolves complete, hand in this one, hunt lynx complete, hunt turkey complete, and that's level 35. This is so much better and more chill way of leveling up. This is beautiful right now because everyone's gone to bed. It's like almost 4 a.m. in Australia right now. So I've got these hemp fields all to myself. Just gonna chill, listen to some music and gather for hours. Okay, let's check out this XP drop. So boom, 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 boom. 5.8k XP drop, not bad. 36 weapon smithing now. These things give really, really good XP. 
These are my favorite town project quests. It may not make for the most entertaining YouTube content, but I'm having a good time. Hand it in, and that's level 36. Mining level 70. Have I unlocked something? Gold can now be tracked. Okay. Tomorrow, push to level 40. The next morning. So let's continue our town project leveling guide. Let's see how far we can get today. Common health potions, coarse leather, complete. Aged wood, complete. Found a bunny rabbit I have to kill indiscriminately. This game hates bunny rabbits and there's many quests to slaughter bunny rabbits. Poor things. Man, this area is usually covered in trees, but I think everyone's doing the same kind of town project quests. So the whole area is being deforested. It's kind of cool, really. In episode one, the Australian tax office took over Everfall and they had extreme tax rates. I think they realized a lot of people didn't want to level here because of that. And they've actually set the tax rates to be more reasonable. Interesting how that works. Level 90 woodworking. The good thing about this leveling method is it's fantastic for leveling your life skills, which is going to be great for crafting different things at endgame. I'm not sure if New World plans on doing this, but I think there's a lot of things that RuneScape has that would fit very well in this game, such as maybe a max cape. You max out every profession, you explore every part of the map, you do every single quest in the game and you get a special cape or something for being like maxed, for essentially completing the game, doing everything the game has to offer. That'd be cool. Additionally, skills capes, I'd love to see that. Although capes aren't a thing in this game, so maybe it'd have to be something else. They should make some kind of flex items for maxing out each of these skilling things. Players love that kind of long-term grind to achieve something that you can show off, something that makes you really stand out, something that shows just how much of a neckbeard you are. The game could have world bosses with extremely rare drops, like 1 in 1000 drop rate. I think New World could definitely benefit from some of the sandboxy ideas that RuneScape has for sure. It's not even sandboxy really, World of Warcraft has those things as well. You complete a bunch of achievements and you get a super rare mount, special titles, you could have uh, weapon effects. The more stuff like that in New World, the better long term, I think. Because everyone's saying that you're going to run out of endgame content very quickly. Achievements and long term grinds, things like that, it helps prolong a game. This year, I feel like I've gone for a bit of a change in how I play MMOs. Previously, I would pretty much only play MMOs as someone that rushes to endgame, hardcore PvP player just kind of wants to do end game content. But this year I've started to get into the story aspect of MMOs from playing Final Fantasy XIV. And New World's kind of getting me into the crafting and professions aspects of MMOs. I've never really been someone that spends a lot of time doing the crafting, gathering, economy, profession side of MMOs. But I guess with New World, you just love being out in the world, looking at the environment, just chilling. The game's done such a good job of it that it's made someone that's not typically into that play style get into it. When your world looks this good, it's kind of difficult not to get into the crafting and gathering. Can I as off staff that? Ooh. Okay, so I'm the one as off staffing it right now. Close the portal. It's shattered. 1,400 XP and that's level 37. And for the first time, I've actually out leveled the MSQ. I'm going to head on down to Cutlass Keys soon and continue that because MSQ is pretty good XP and that should quickly get me to 38. Oh, restricted area. Region is blocked. What? Ha upcoming invasion. Wait, what? I'm gonna pull the monster from that region. This game's so scuffed, isn't it? I guess it's scuffed because there's an upcoming invasion. How long is that invasion? All right, cutlass keys, 9 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. All right, so I can't continue the MSQ for an hour because the donkey developers have put the area you need to go into for to continue the MSQ in a restricted area whenever there's an invasion. Another example of the 420 IQ quest design. I, I don't know. <laughs> oh my god. No. No. <laughs> oh my god. How? I've got a quest up here that I need to hand in. Region restricted. Why is he there? Why can't they put him here, for example? Why does he have to be there? Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh, it's a disaster. <laughs> 
just when I think it can't get worse, I'm surprised over and over again at the incompetence of the questing. I'm sick of talking about it. I feel like I'm just repeating myself. It's, it's maddening. It's absolutely maddening. As much as there's a lot to complain about with this game, and as much as I'm constantly complaining about the questing, I am still having a really good time and I still can't stop myself from playing the bloody game. My complaining comes from a place of frustration. I'm enjoying the game and there's just a few things that I'm frustrated with because they just don't really make sense. I can imagine some other people probably quitting the game over some of this shit though. Level 50, weaponsmithing, now I can make steel weapons. See if I've got any upgrades from these chests, probably not. Useless. Oh, oh that's heavy footwear. Useless, 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 useless. Ooh, what's this? Some big PvP going on over here. They're all around my level. Maybe we should get involved. It's quite epic seeing all of this random world PvP going on. Oh my god, there's even more PvP going on over here. What is happening? So many people. Flag for PvP. Let's go. Okay, Hayden, cue the heavy metal music. It's PvP time. Okay, I think we won that fight. People seem to be leaving now, but that was pretty cool. Iron Ingots can just do that straight away, and that's level 38. I scorn look, level 13 now. Shouldn't be too long until I can get my first ultimate ability. I think I'm gonna go for Ice Tempest. And that's Fire Staff level 12. Can I get my ultimate yet? Yes, I can. Runes of Helios. I think that's a pretty substantial damage upgrade. Big AoE. Oh yeah, thanks for grouping all those mobs up, dude. That's some nice XP. I got you, Mr. Healing Man. You're welcome. He needed big damage and that's what we supplied him with. 155 tracking and skinning now. Getting so much XP from just fucking skinning shit. I think I swear too much. And we're encumbered. But because I'm on a very laggy server, being encumbered doesn't mean anything because it breaks the game. Look what happens when you're encumbered on a laggy server. <laughs> You just jitter around everywhere. I'm thinking what we need to do now, I've got 5,000 gold, is I need to buy a house. That way I have two teleports and I can teleport around to two different towns for these uh, town hall quests whilst being fairly overweight. So I can go out in the wild, get super overweight on resources, teleports in my house, and then I've also got the in teleport uh, additionally. So that's gonna speed things up quite a bit. The only question is, do I want my house in Windswood or Everfall? Aesthetically, they're both my two favorite places. Everfall's just so convenient. It's right in the middle of the map and it's a gorgeous autumn zone. But Windswood has the hemp fields, all of the bison. Oh, I've got, it's gotta be Winds. Mm. Right, you know what, we're gonna have the house in Windswood. Just feels like a place that I'm always going to want to teleport back to. Decision has been... Oh, I'm looking at the property tax rate. 15%. Oh, I don't know about that. Nice cheap little house. We're purchasing the house. Let's do it. Property tax. 750. So, trophy buff. Place trophies to give you buffs. Preview the house first. Let's just have a look. So it's got a downstairs. Decent enough view outside. It's got an upstairs. Two fireplaces. It's all right. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'll take it. Okay, let's decorate the house, I guess. Can put myself a little dog down. He's gonna be chilling by the fire. There we go, he's a happy boy. All right, we'll have the kitchen over here. Bit of gin in the corner and some food on the floor. So we're poor as fuck and we don't own furniture. All right, so now I can teleport to Windswood every now and again. Nice milestone for the mining, that's level 75. And now alchemy stones can be tracked, that's pretty huge because those things are very valuable. I can probably get a full level from just spamming the MSQ right now, I've managed to get quite far ahead of it. So that's what I'm going to do, that should get me to level 40. I have travelled great distance to come to you for this MSQ. Reach level 40 to unlock the next main story chapter. F. Well, what the f*** do we do now? 55 weaponsmithing. Someone steal your iron ore. Yeah. Oh, I thought you was dying with that scream. Mining the rocks together. 
This looks awesome. I'm gonna take a screenshot. 69 smelting. I really wish that song Live to Win could be used in the editing of this video. But unfortunately, the last time I used that song, even for like 20 seconds, I got a copyright strike and they like took all my monetization. Feels bad, man. This would be like the perfect game to make a live to win montage. That being said, I'm sure my editor has done a great job of finding other appropriate montage songs. To live a sateen, and that's level 40. With that, we can now continue the MSQ. We can also upgrade the Azov Staff and Survivalist Tent Tier 4. Although, right now, I'm still sitting with Survivalist Tent Tier 1. Tidy all of the bloody cups off my desk from days of being a bit of a neckbeard. Clean the desk. A clean desk is a happy desk. Next episode, I feel like doing a bit of questing in Weaver's Fen. Haven't really spent too much time in this zone. I'm now level 40, so I should be able to handle all of the content in here, no problem. And it's a nice change of aesthetic, really, isn't it? I've been running around those happy, safe meadows for a little bit too long. Crossing the bridge to enter a new zone, Restless Shore. Nice, so at level 40 plus, you start dropping tier four gear. And this is, of course, when the big damage starts to appear. Big XP drop, that's 175 tracking and skinning. And I can finally track large predators. I think that's the final unlock. I can currently skin animals up to level 62. So I've basically maxed out the skill at this point. Wasn't expecting to reach that milestone this episode. Well, this is an ominous descent, isn't it? A lone adventurer out here in the middle of the night. No other players are online because it's like 5 a.m. in Australia. Surrounded by death. Well, isn't this nice? A hidden cave under a waterfall. And I think with us hitting level 40, almost 41, I think that would be a really good time to wrap up this video. Next episode, we're going to be questing from 40 to 50, and we're going to be taking on the next dungeon called The Depths. Additionally, next episode, we're going to check out the Starstone Barrows, level 35 dungeon. I was expecting that to be part of the MSQ, but apparently it's not. Awesome progress made in this episode, and next time, checking out some of these high-level zones. See you in the next one.